serious problem with that lecture at this time. I wouldn't listen to it myself. <laughs> and all of you at some time or other, you are very happy that your professor didn't turn up for the class. So I would uh, really request Deepak to reconsider this talk. I am also an amateur bartender and I'm an amateur DJ. Services in those two areas may be more interesting than to give a talk on this. And uh, so I really, I, I mean seriously. Alternatively, you can pick up your dinner, come back, and when you're talking, uh, when you're taking your dinner, then I can sort of talk. Because uh, for various reasons, I'm participating in the dinner today. So I'll be free, and you will be taking the dinner. Uh, would that be OK? Because I, I'm quite serious. I mean, it's, it's late. discussing seriously this business and I only want to share two small things about that. As a user of e-commerce, I have bought more books than I care to. <laughs> Normally, uh, uh, I now buy e-books and my iPad has all of them and I have read less than what I used to read as a normal printed book. So I think uh, where uh, e-commerce e e is it's making life so easy that you look at a text, but you're, you're reading a BBC uh, thing, and suddenly it mentions a book. You feel interested. Press on uh, 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 Amazon dot in now, and in five seconds you have a book, and then that much less in my bank, and uh, many of it I don't read. That's one effect that I have seen, whether good or bad, I don't know. And uh, the second thing is. Just yesterday, there was a very interesting news that some of the mental capabilities of people apparently get improved when they actually do a physical reading on a physical book than a physical reading on a device like this. So I think those who are selling physical books, I think, need not be scared. I think you will have a big market. I don't think there will be a problem. Uh, sooner or later, people will realize this, and they will come back to that. I thought what I just... Uh, asked to talk about ma manufacturing in the India and its impact. Uh, I'm very far from that field, though I participated in preparing a document on manufacturing when I was a member try. Uh, but I think it requires a lot of uh, business inputs and many other things. So I prefer, uh, I showed it to Commander Janet, some of the things that I have, including some funny videos on uh, Tom and Jerry. He finally selected this. So in case uh, you are you have not selected Tom and Jerry, the blame goes to come at agenda. So I thought I'll speak on this uh, topic if it is of uh, interest to you, and I'll quickly go through some of the things and then um, try to make it as interesting as possible. My name is Jamadagni, just to correct the pronunciation, and uh, I'm a professor at the Indian Space Science, and I'm a part of what is called Department of Electronic Systems Engineering, and the speciality of our department is that we interact a lot with industry. And we have a lot of projects which we are running for the industry, mostly uh, research projects. We don't call them R&D because many a times the D is the industry part, and then we do a lot of research projects for them. We have been working with Boeing, Intel, uh, Xilinx, uh, Freescale, uh, and TI, and many others. Uh, currently, also, we handle a lot of interesting projects for many of them. We have a large project with the MSME Ministry. They have asked us to do something for the SMEs in uh, this region. Uh, we have just started that project, and in case you are interested, I can tell you about them after uh, we're done with this one. So we'll look at this uh, so-called ICT urban management. I wanted to purposefully avoid the term smart cities. Uh, these have become buzzwords, and what it ultimately really means is application of ICT in a useful way to manage a city. Now, so wh why do we do this? Now, if you look at... Yeah. The Lura City is something which is, uh, uh, yeah, but I, 
I am used to walking away from the mic. Till now, urbanization was sort of considered as a bad thing. It was considered that it is a, uh, the Western countries have urbanized, we have not, and it's a great thing to happen and continue and so on. But this is no more the case. Particularly in the developing world, the uh, urbanization is happening for obvious reasons, like I don't have to mention this, but now that you said there is a reduction in jobs in the, uh, I am a bit worried whether it is true that uh, uh, better job opportunities actually exist in the cities, but I still think that there is a lot of, uh, uh, these are some of the reasons. And that's why the cities are growing. Now, in fact, there is a, a recent change in sort of uh, thoughts of sociologists and economists saying that the urban world is not a bad word. And to be uh, urban is not really bad at all. And the urban centers can contribute to a lot of economy. If I'm right, Bangalore City, for instance, which is, uh, uh, which is 10% of the population, you know, a little more, than, maybe 16% of the population of the whole Karnataka is probably responsible for more than 60% of the revenues in the state. So this is going to happen. We are going to have more and more cities which are going to be the backbone and in a way these cities will start supporting the, support the, uh, the rural centers. So how do we uh, manage such large cities? Uh, I am the victim of this today. It took me 2 hours 15 minutes to transit a distance of 21 kilometers. So I could have probably walked if I was a Olympic walker uh, faster than coming by. Uh, so this being the case, increasing urbanization has also its ugly sides. I have taken as much as all these uh, pictures from our own cities. Some of them are my own pictures. And uh, so urban population is increasing. Cities with more than one million population in 2013 were 60 in India. Uh, and 40% of population in urban centers by 2020 predicted uh, there's about half a million, uh, billion people. Then population density is increasing. One of the densest, I think, uh, cities in the world is probably Delhi, for instance. And there are portions of Delhi which are so dense uh, that it is uh, really becoming a serious problem. Central Delhi, 40,000 per square kilometer and increasing. Uh, when I say Central Delhi, it is not the Lutians Delhi, which I think has uh, 40 per square kilometer, but I'm talking about the more uh, Jenna, sorry for the dignity of city. Uh, then the area is uh, increasing, and then uh, like Greater Bangalore is about 1,000 square kilometers and so on. Now, so the main concerns in these cities, for instance, is increasing traffic. Bangalore apparently has about 5 points, after I wrote this slide uh, about three months back, uh, I'm told that it is now 5.4 million vehicles. And just to give a kind of a dimension of this, if you just park all these vehicles, it will take about 7 to 10 square kilometers. Uh, if we smartly place them next to each other, it will probably take about 7 square kilometers. And if it is uh, just parked as we then it takes about 70 square kilometers. So in a city, vehicle, it, it requires a lot, uh, lot of space. And it is a very interesting study by tra uh, transportation people that the time taken to transit a given distance as time progresses backwards. That is, in London, it is known now that the transit times are exactly as it was in Asia. Uh, given all the progress that we have, uh, you want to transit a certain number of uh, kilometers by, uh, by any kind of normal transportation, it is typically taking the time that it took in 1880. So given this, we will huh? uh, go back uh, to uh, year uh, 0 AD uh, by the time we go to 20, 20, uh, 2030 or 2040. I mean, just a uh, little uh, dig at our kind of traffic. Uh, typically in Bangalore center, it has been measured that at uh, normal average traffic, that is when the traffic is not heavy, your, tra your transit velocities are between 15 and 20 kilometers per hour. And the time that it takes to transit a distance of 10 kilometers per city is increasing from 20 minutes to up to one hour, depending on the time of the day. And another thing, which is from my own life, is I'm every day I transit about 15 kilometers. Uh, if I have to transit minutes, I had to start earlier and earlier. And in night, I used to start at 8 a.m. Now I have to start at 5.30 a.m. if I have to take 20 minutes. 
So we can soon reach a day when we'll have to leave at midnight. To, I mean, you know, midnight again from the other side will be heavy traffic. So about 2 a.m. in order to reach my office at 2.20. Big issue in transportation. Then, pollution obviously. Nearly, we are all coal mine. Instead of fire, uh, uh, say, burning coal in coal mine, near coal mine, we are burning here. That's the only difference. And mind you, even if you use electric vehicles today, they are charged. Charged by electricity generated by coal, and you are burning coal somewhere. So, literally, if you really see, you are really burning a lot of uh, things for this purpose. Then, magnified effect of climate change because of all this. Average minimum temperature is plus 5 degrees now, scientifically. And those of you, I don't see any of them who are born before me here. Uh, so, those of you who know Bangalore of, uh, Bangalore of 1960s, we didn't have a concept of a fan in our rooms. Uh, even in peak summer, we were uh, sort of once or twice we complained it was hot and so on. And then the way we complained it was when it was just 31 degrees. And uh, which is sort of a winter temperature in some of the villages uh, uh, in the rural UP. So, uh, summer temperatures in rural UP. So the temperature has really gone up. It is plus five. And realistically, uh, New York, for instance, during summer, was about 41 degrees. Now it is reaching 40 about 6 degrees more because of cooling. Then rainfall distribution, it has shifted and higher peaks and average remains the same. You saw today, Bangalore has rains. I just checked up before coming here. The neighborhood in Bangalore, about no rain. The rain seems to be mainly in the city. There are scientific reasons for this. The rainfall has gone Particularly Bangalore, we are not equipped for high rainfall and we let this water go everywhere it can go and then we have all kinds of problems that we face. So we have some of these issues. Then there are some social increased threats due to crime and militancy. I explain this at all. We know 26-11, we know 9-11, then in our, we had our own chair in Bangalore where we had, we had a, uh, a gentleman died. This kind of problem. Uh, again, those who know, it is typically uh, there was no problem walking the streets of Bangalore after uh, midnight and early mornings and so on. Uh, we had to worry about walking even during the day. So, I mean, things have changed. Uh, particularly, I think women are facing even bigger difficulties than we did, uh, than we do as men. The increased threat to the populace due to militancy, this is happening everywhere. Heightened inequality, distribution of resources, water, electricity, per capita, space, etc., etc. You know, Bangalore in 19 people bought a plot of land. It was typically about 80 feet, 100 feet, which is close to a quarter acre. About any small, I mean, it was as though people couldn't live. And you go to Shankarpuram and all these, you have unfortunately getting sold. Today, a standard thing central place is a 20 feet by 30 feet. Get to about 6 feet by 3 feet, you know what it is. BDO in, in, in Bangalore Development Authority in the next we have plots of 8 feet by 3 feet for your convenience. Whatever purpose that it can be used. So it is really the affordability is so bad that you large plots, mind you, is you, the temperature would not go up. The, the, the various we just can't afford that today. If we, if this, if people had reasonable plots in the 1930s, we would be a 5,000 square kilometer. It is simply just not possible. Then, difficulty of the but sometimes we enjoy this. Uh, still drive, uh, I famously remember our cricketer. Somebody asked him, where do you drive in your country? On what? Uh, drive on the left or on the right? He said, we drive. <laughs> I think there was a brilliant expression. Of that is because there is no law enforcement. Okay, so we And so I think this is uh, nice in a way. 
other hand, I wish there was a little more discipline and then one hour earlier today, if you had a little more discipline, that is a problem. Technology helped the solution. So we have talked about so many things. I think all of you can talk more to this from your personal uh, uh, experiences. We do this. So we hope so. I see many different ways. And uh, so the applications of ICT in city management is a topic. And this is growing to become so far smart. Uh, the moment I say that if I make a, a willingly commit crime, a, a small the smart city is such that I get a bill for whatever uh, this one added. I uh, it will be smart to that extent. I think we still will. Have it is more like how can you manage it better, and how and where the technology can help, and that we have. Uh, don't worry about that 50 slides. Uh, I always put that number to scare you what I can do. And stop somewhere to be that I stop 10 or 11 or something. This, uh, in the city, practically everywhere. You can do it in pollution improvement. And transport management system is called uh, smart cities, where you talk about transportation. Then city watch for a lot of things in this. Then you can do e expediency and people's participation. I believe that this fourth one, uh, stores and their problems, but at least where, for instance, you did mention about I think it has brought down a lot of corruption. Very inventive. This innovation is in various fields. You don't know how to make money if you have an online reservation. I think it has been a little more difficult. Again, you uh, defeat the system as business good for everyone and things are happening and uh, so this kind of things, if you put a lot of effort like this, I think it is going to become more and more. And then particularly things like corruption and other things. Then move towards self-reliance, water management, communication system, care and so on. To give an example, water, I think except in Mumbai, uh, in Indian I think it's the only city which enjoys water. So take a city of Bangalore twice a week. And uh, so we don't know whether water is muddy or not. Twice a week you take what it is and then do make, make do. Process, what has happened is we started sinking homes. And these bore wells, they the ground. And therefore, the moment my neighbor borewell, here it was more, and my borewell is gone. I can drill it to twenty meters more. So this game has been interesting. Part is apparently for nuclear and borewells, Bangalore thousand crores over a period of five years. Statistics was available by about twenty. Imagine 12,000 crores you can run, and probably a water scheme which actually runs 24. A disturbing trend is that many bottom in the middle of the road, if you have noticed, I can give you a check out uh, in the uh, Hanuman. People drilling wells uh, on the road. First of all, there is a problem of legality, a lot of other issues. So now, if we Full system whereby energy in a more reasonable way. I think will probably be spent on these kind of services for the business. And secondly, uh, the thing is, I think you will have a more equitable of this material. So we can do a lot in this direction. Management of growth. 
there is a fashion from a university in Germany, I think. They have studied the city's growth. Growth of cities are really like that of Namibia. The shape of that and then this, the way it grows is really part of uh, how the Namibia grows. Bigger and bigger and bigger. And it splits into two. So now Bangalore and Tumpur. And so it will start becoming like this. So look at this growth. Managing is also a very interesting thing. So, opportunities for technology, I think this is one of the interesting things that we can always do. A lot of important nice things can be measured. I don't know if you know, there's a fascinating uh, website called flightradar24.com. Do any, any of you uh, use it? Just go on that. And by crowdsourcing and getting information from a lot of people, you see the airspace of Bangalore, what flight is coming, what flight is coming, things like that. And then there is even a 3D image that you can see from the cockpit to the person and so on. Very interesting. Things have been done at zero cost. Uh, flight radar at 24 is a kind of a thing. So this measurement and monitoring is so extensive and so many people are doing. So most of our cell phones have now a thermometer. Most cell phones have a barometer. And by just crowdsourcing, you can do a lot of things in a, in a very nice way. So measurement is going to be a big deal. Trend analysis, what is happening? You're going up and down and so on, and hopefully we're able to say, and then about clogged roads and many things. Modeling and generating what-if scenarios. This is a thing where we have now assumed by converting all process to CNG, the uh, Unfortunately, that was not the case. Uh, what happened, and post this on all taxes, even if they ran on patrol in uh, Delhi. Now, what if situations could have been done? You could do a study where vehicles, and so many of them run diesel, what if the vehicles And only when it is beneficial, you change your Otherwise, it will be a kind of meaningless uh, kind of uh, legislation. So, it could be done. We can always give an advisory. Say that. Oh, when you go back, this road is so polluted that you are likely <coughs> to pass out in the middle of the road. Uh, I don't think people will go anymore in that road. I mean, it should be realistic, obviously. But we should give a realistic uh, advisory. Awareness of the public and helping legislation and, and leading to better alternatives in things where we have a lot of opportunities for the for the technology. I will not go into uh, We have, I have the next few slides on some of the real reality checks. Has it really happened? Do we have such projects and so on? Just to indicate that we do a lot of things. We have a number of uh, both in India and elsewhere and mainly towards monitoring uh, this kind of advisory, then monitoring uh, various places and telling you at least whether you are going to be telling you about electricity, telling you about a lot of we have a uh, actually monitors electricity randomly too. and uh, we plot when electricity is in place or not. We find a peculiar so peculiar issue that there are some regions that have a problem with electricity. They have 24 bar 7. Not have. Uh, I think it is a Ask, how is this? And when you examine the answer, uh, and it's so embarrassing that I think we should. And uh, similarly, we have another project where roads, and then what we are hoping to do is that we plot the quality of road, back breaking road. This is a smooth road, etc. So we classify and we say who is responsible for construction of this road because that is a blame. And when was that done? I think this will do a bit of for involved in this process. I think you can do those kind of things. I have a feeling that the urban population into these kind of uh, things. Now you see for rickshaws are managed nowadays. There is that Yamgadi which is a reliable service with rickshaws. So I 
these are not initiatives of the government, these are not by legislation. Such things will start happening in urban uh, there with what is otherwise happening. So, I think there are a lot of opportunities for to be applied in the cities in the next uh, few. It is a business opportunity for us in an institute like ours. We are uh, doing this monitoring of aircraft, for instance. You should see the fun. I mean, we're really happening. So the technology can really give you it can be a business proposition, innovation and invention, and it can be a lot of fun. So people should get involved in this. And people get involved, it will be a large uh, also. Yeah, even a small percentage of this will lead to. Uh, so with these kind of ramblings, I would to all the 50. If you are interested, I can give you. I, I don't think uh, at this stage so I will close at this. And if some uh, specific, yeah. Robin, what is the role model like cities will be? Focusing just like me, Sanjay. Which is role model, right? Sanjay, right? Have you visited Sanjay? Me. He would not like to go to Sanjay. Then what kind of Our definition in the academia is that you, by and large, extremely efficiently so that you get better out from the city. In the sense, the number of petrol uh, stations, even a bigger traffic, only this many petrol stations, new because you want so many of them. That would be a smart thing. Then, can I really make a transportation decision that I want to leave the car behind and then go by that? Uh, look at New York City. Nobody wants to go by. The secondary effort of that is obesity is not. If you take the percentage of obesity, the lowest in the whole of the United States. So when we talk about these are the initiatives where given a resource, water, electricity, any of these things, rather that these are efficient. And things like increased temperature, etc., are reduced. Important thing, you manage tensions of people. If you just go on today in Bangalore, interesting programs are there where citizens can go and I think there are very few. Now, can you provide opportunities? And suppose transportation is the problem, e entertainment. Maybe a small group, then they have a big screen and uh, let's say music from Balamuli Krishna. Musicians from South India. So, can you maybe there are many things to do these kind of things. So, for academia, I don't know about the industry, follows the same uh, principle, is simply better transparency and better advice. Now, for instance, that I have seen, where, suppose you say, I place for so, so much of time. Tell me what is the best way to live. That would be nice. It? Now I'm I give various reasons why I do so. Now, I mean I'm just doing it because I have no alternative. I had a opportunity institute where I could walk within a couple of kilometers in let's say 15 minutes one way. I have a lot of issues staying near. I prefer to stay outside. This is the smartness. Following a Shenzhen, Beijing, you know, Beijing is one of the worst cities. And they had to close down those cities in the Sierra Leone for close Beijing for some time if they want to control pollution. And since it is not far gone, uh, what are you talking about? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. There are also many other. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and uh, Jay Srinivasan's group, they have a debate on climate change. You are doing it. Uh, in fact, Professor Rodam Narsimha, uh, he is able to completely simulate a cloud. In a sense, given what is the atmosphere now, he's able to tell you whether cloud formation will take place, which is a big deal.